have you guys seen this so Ari Lennox is one of my favorite R&B singers out there, one of my favorite R&B artists out there, one of my favorite artists out there, point blank. But she went through a little bit of a weird situation where for some reason she went on tour with Rod Wave. Yeah, you heard that, Rod Wave. I don't know why that's the case. Um, I did read somewhere that it's because she's independent and she had to just go on tour with somebody and that was maybe the best option that was available. Obviously, Rod Wave is huge and people do like him and stuff. Yeah, he's huge, literally, and probably and figurative as well, but he does get a lot of streams. He does have a big fan base. His tour does really well or, or has done really well. And she decided to go on tour with him because I guess, you know, he was the best option that was available. But I didn't really think there was any there was any you know there was any sort of link between Ari Lennox's crowd and Rodway's crowd so I didn't understand why she did it in the first place but she did it and she had a very bad experience right she had a very bad experience um touring with Rod Wave and she spoke about it a little bit and I'm going to play the video of when she speaks about it and then I'm going to play the video of her going back and forth with Joe Budden so Joe Budden for some reason decided to take personal offense at Ari Lennox being upset about her tour with Rod Wave and then it turned into a whole debacle as it always does so let's play the video of Ari Lennox talking about how she had a bad time on tour with Rod Wave and then we'll go from there everybody else ain't necessarily welcoming and understanding to every type of music whether you whether you get it or not like I don't pay to go to a show and like plot on ways to attack or antagonize or disrespect an artist that's on stage like that's just not my it's not my mo but whether i'm whether i'm like this super fan or not you know whether i listen to your music or not like i'm just paying attention to everything you know so to be treated like that is i mean i mean i'm not the first so basically if you don't know what she's talking about when she went on tour with rod wave she had people throwing stuff at her when she was on stage um, Broadway fans weren't happy that she was opening for Broadway and they got irate and they started throwing stuff at her now she did kind of lean into it really well I think the next show that she did she came out wearing a helmet that was pretty funny like a motorcycle helmet and shit but basically I guess it wasn't a good experience right no one wants to be on stage and you're singing your heart out you know with her amazing fucking R&B melodies and ballads and then you're having people throw stuff at you but Rodway's fans didn't weren't happy they threw stuff at her and obviously this is her basically talking about her experience after the fact first I mean there's tons of people who have experienced like violence and disrespect I mean I was on that stage and somebody, people would have, you know, shit on their screen saying next, like, <laughs> and I just, I can't deal with shit. That's brutal, isn't it? Brendan and those comedians complain about people saying mean things online, but I don't think anyone's going to a Brendan Shorb show and saying, and putting up their phone and saying, bean cheese, bean cheese, right? <laughs> imagine how much they would cry these guys are crying about words online but these artists are having people throw stuff at throw shit at them live on stage who's that artist i, I think it was a white girl who was it was it bebe rexa or something bebe rexa somebody threw stuff at her and she had to get stitches i don't know what they threw but they threw stuff at her and they sliced open her fucking eyebrow she had to get stitches do you know how much a comedian would cry if they did that they be talking about it ad nauseum on their podcast, crying, cancel culture, I'm not safe, protect comedians, hashtag protect stand up, stand up for stand up, hashtag like imagine how insufferable a comedian would be if they got attacked on stage, if they got someone thrown, imagine how, imagine. Shit like that, I'll, like, I'll flick you off. Now I know I'm old. I thought you said Annie Lennox, lol, the woman that sings Sweet Dream. Sweet dreams are made. <laughs> yeah big up austin casey you're revealing your age there brother fucking hell you're revealing your age <laughs> big up austin casey that's hilarious and <laughs> it's Ari Lennox. different complexion because <laughs> i would never do that to you i would never let anyone do that to you it's, it's one thing to hate me like that's fine like you you hate me but it's another thing to be like get this bitch off stage or like have your little signs or like assault me like it's just an it's just like what is this aggression like you're that pissed but it's also like thank you because there's a lot of bills that are caught up on so thank you but it's like whoo the disrespect it was a lot for like two and a half months like knowing i didn't have to do it 
like losing my getting my wardrobe stolen it Oof. was just a very hard two and a half imagine stealing Ari Lennox's clothes her dresses and shit because if you've seen her now she's lost a bunch of weight she looks incredible she's obviously sober now yeah in trim shape clear-minded so all of her outfits are like R&B outfits like bra tops little skirt mini skirt dresses things right it's like when you lose weight the first thing you want to do is get naked so she has really loads of hot girl clothes and she fucking got who's stealing her hot girl clothes imagine her runaway fans going to her dressing room to steal her clothes <laughs> what <laughs> half fucking months hold on is zakamika actually dead is he actually dead or is this a troll oh uche saying they're trolling is, is zakamika actually dead that would be hilarious <laughs> <laughs> if Zakamiko actually died, I might actually order some Five Guys or something. You know what I mean? As a way to honor him, I might order some Five Guys or some Popeyes or something. Do you know what I mean? As a honor, as to honor him. <laughs> it's like if Bert dies, I'll order some Tito. I'll, I'll take some Tito's to the face. If Bert Kreischer dies, I'll take some Tito's to the face. If Zakamiko dies, I'll you know what I mean? I'll get I'll get myself two extra big fucking Domino's pizzas or something. <laughs> <laughs> and do a fucking Hassan Abbey and start chewing in a mic. Very, very, very hard. And it, it was very lonely too. Um, but I, I thought it would be a good idea. You know, like I always imagine like myself, like, you know, I asked my agents, like, can you, like, can I open up for Red Hot Chili Peppers? Can I open up for Little Dragon? All right, Ari, come on, babe. I love you, but what business does she have opening up for Red Hot Chili Peppers? That's not in line. I think I've always been at a fool. I think the main headlining artist should be way more involved in picking their openers because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. If I want to watch Red Hot Chili Peppers, I don't want to listen to Ari Lennox. Even though I love Ari Lennox, they should be in the same sort of like genre at least, or same sort of like sonic wave or something. You know what I mean? It's a bit too much difference there, regard. I think, but headliners don't really pick their openers, I don't think so. Especially Red Hot Chili Peppers at their level. They're probably way too famous and too busy to be picking openers. But I don't think you should be, you know what I mean? That's a bit crazy. That's a bit crazy. Maybe it shows her mismanagement of her team. But I don't think that would have been a good, I don't think that would have been a good link up personally for me. And I remember my agent telling me like, you know, well, these things have to make sense. And so when this offer came about, like, I was just like, it, it, it was kind of like similar to that, where it was just like, you know, this, of course, I would love to do it. Like, this is a great time, a great opportunity to, like, show people I can really sing and, like, get some fans. Hold on, Koyla. Koyla, you don't know about fucking Shea Butter fucking baby. You don't know about pressure. You don't know about unloyal. You don't know about up late. Chicago boy. Huh? You don't know about our fucking Ari Lennox? Leak it. Set him up. Queen space. Cognac eyes. Come on, man. This is the queen of R&B. Don't, come on, man. Don't give me, don't give me, uh, don't give me fucking, um, what are we doing here? This is the queen of R&B. The queen of R&B. Bow down. This is the reincarnation of Whitney Houston. <laughs> Um, I was wrong. And now I get why, no, it does not make sense to open up for anybody. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I'm sorry for anyone. It just doesn't matter. They, well, I don't know. Maybe it will matter. Maybe there are fans that are sweeter than other fans, but that, that type of music, I'm good. I'm good. And it's, it's fucked up, but it is what it is. It's a certain type of energy where people are just disrespectful as hell. I've watched it with like, with um, Rico Nasty, same shit. Yeah, she got everything. Like bad. there's a certain type of fan base that you're like literally aggressive. Mm. I'm okay. Exactly. I'm I, good. Like I, I gotta agree. worry about getting touched and I'm just here doing a job like that you're actually paying, like you're paying for me to do my job right now. Like. Your big ablutionary commission. Oh my God. Her nose is insane. Nah. Ain't nobody see that? Nah, 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 nah. Illusionary Commission, please, please watch what you say, brother. Please. 
That is wild. Yo. Illusionary Commission. Illus illusory Commission. Illusory Commission. Please watch what you say. Because that's insane. That is so fucking racist. Is your mum fucking Ann Coulter or something? <laughs> is your mum Ann Coulter? <laughs> Holy fuck. No, you're a wild boy. Illusionary commission, please. You're a fucking wild boy. That could be my sister, bro. How about if that was my sister? Huh? How about if that was my fucking sister? Would you be telling her to fucking get off your lawn? Huh? Tell her to cut up some pineapples. Or fucking... Come on, bro. Come on. You're telling her to fucking dice up the fucking watermelons. Is that what you'd be doing? That's fucking wild you said that. I'm disgusted. I'm sh I'm actually shaking. I'm shaking right now. That's not nice. And if I see that type of shit again, I don't know what I'm going to do. Wow. I'm cultivating a viewership of people. Who might hate my guts because of my skin color. <laughs> you niggas are fucking awful. <laughs> no, I'm not having that, man. I'm, I'm going to defend fucking Ari Lennox to the core. Don't, don't you dare insult my baby like that again. Wow. That was so rude. <laughs> that was awful. No, I don't like that. I don't like that in the slightest. I don't want to hear that anymore. God damn it, bro. God damn it. That bummed me out. I'm not going to lie. That bummed me out, man. You niggas in the chat be racist, yo. Y'all niggas be racist? Y'all niggas don't like black people? You don't like Hussein Bolt? Jay-Z? Tyler the Creator? Huh? Ah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo <laughs> Niggas are like You know it's her nose Like what about her nose man What about her fucking nose bro What's wrong with her nose Her nose is fucking beautiful <laughs> Fucking Steven Crowder out here Big up Stinger Goo We never seen Oz and Rod wave in the same room <laughs> Thoughtful face Yo What is this turning into This is turning into a fucking shooting gallery for racist. And I'll not stand for it. I'm not standing for it now, okay? First of all, you guys don't even know that I'm actually biracial. I'm actually not fully black anyway. So you guys need to like recognize my fucking ancest ancestry. You know what I mean? Like guys need to relax. So all of these fucking black jokes and shit. Ha ha, he's African. Ha ha. Look at him. He looks like a monkey. Ha ha. He's making, he's eating bananas, all this sort of shit. It's not actually true. I'm actually biracial. So relax. Take it easy. Relax. Okay. Look at look at look at that. Look at the color of my palms. What's that? What's that look like? Exactly. <laughs> People say biracial with two Africans, your black mix with midnight. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's fucking good. so rude. Your black mix of midnight. <laughs> Holy shit. Whew. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm that nigger in moonlight, bro. That's what I am. I'm that nigger in moonlight, bro. They're that buff nigger that's fucking that guy. Like, that's what I am, bro. Man comes in, the whole room gets dark. You know what I mean? Big up fucking Steve Harvey. Not Steve Harvey. Big up Bernie Mac, sorry. Oh, anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. So, getting back to my black queen, because before I got rudely interrupted by
by you racist. Right? Let's go back to the fucking video. So, Ari Lennox now goes off on Joe, Ro Joe Budden, Joe Rogan. Ari Lennox then claps back at Joe Budden. Let's watch this clip because this is fucking hilarious. We're only about two weeks into January. Ari Lennox is taking the gloves off and she's going at Joe. After coming off the worst tour of her fucking life, yes, these were actual words that Ari Lennox used. She just got off tour with Rod Wave. It was not the best tour. You guys remember the incident of somebody throwing something at her while she was performing? Woman. She went on social media to bash the tour. She said it was the worst tour in every fucking way imaginable. It was so annoying because like you could be singing your ass off and they just don't give a shit. They're not there for you. They're there for music that will never be like my music. They're there for voices that will never be like my voice. And so it just got old after a while. I'm giving you my soul, my vocals, and nothing was ever enough. She said every night when I got on stage, I was fighting for my life. I just remember every show, I was racing to get off stage, racing to get through my set. You're getting angry at me affirming you? This is not my crowd, and it will never be. This was Ari voicing her frustrations at the tour, complaining that Rod Wave fans were not very accepting of her. Now, Joe actually went on this podcast and had some harsh criticism. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with what she says. As, as, as Carly mentioned up here, if you've been on a bad tour, a bad one is a bad one surely social media is there for you to vent and moan on if you can't vent moan and complain on social media what's the point of having a social media account so i don't see why joe Biden got so triggered by her saying what she said she just moaned about her experience she spoke about it from a very personal point of view um maybe if you're being super critical you could say it was a little bit maybe maybe you could say it was unprofessional because she did the tour, she agreed to it, she knew what she was getting herself into. But I still think you're allowed to complain. You're allowed to complain and say, hey, I didn't have the greatest of time. Why? The best place to do it is social media. You can vent, get it off your system, get it out of your system, sorry, and move on. I don't really see the big issue of, of why Joe Budden was so triggered by it. But let's continue. For her. Here's what Joe said. He love you. Anybody that could tour, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Right, so don't think that we kicking your back. No matter what size the venue is, I don't care if it's SOB, Sony Hall, Irvin Plaza. Don't matter. It's a blessing, mm -hmm. whatever the capacity is. But if you don't want to do that show, don't fucking tell us. Tell your team and the people that talk to you for months about this tour coming up with Rod Wave, who is selling out arenas nationwide. Yep. As a as an artist. Anybody that brings that to me, you got to at least entertain it on table. And yeah. if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Everybody ain't even privy to get the bulk. Oh, we got how many shows? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's 40 of them. Yo, Beyond Nubian, MK, you are fucking insane. AZ is Beyond Nubian. <laughs> So what you're trying to say is that I can't pass with biracial. Is that what you're trying to say? You're trying to say I have no chance of passing because biracial. <laughs> Beyond Nubian is fucking rude. <sighs> From March to fucking October... You not you have to work yourself to the position to say no to that. Artists are nuts. It's glorified babysitting. It's it's yeah. Red hot mm. chili peppers. <laughs> Girl, they'll get you. And it's message. fucked up though, because it is somebody's job somewhere to figure out how to uh, advance Ari Linux. Yeah, I True. Gotta figure yes. out an angle. Somebody has to still figure this out. Especially in an era where songstresses seem to be doing extremely well. And she's amazing, by the way. She's talented. Mm -hmm. She's Yeah, great. she yeah. is. Mm-hmm. She's great. She's got joints. Call yeah. Jasmine Sullivan. Plan some shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I just don't like you grabbing your phone to tell the audience how miserable you were when you didn't tell your team or you told them and they didn't really care. If I got to mm -hmm. hear all about the self-improvement, then I don't want to hear all about you being a victim. Jesus Christ, bro. Mm -hmm. I... <laughs> God almighty. I don't, I, I, I'm just personally for me. I don't want to hear both. Either self-improve and heal exactly. on your fucking own. I don't have to hear every every little well, step was, you take. I don't have to know well, about what it. What she was also saying is that this had an effect on her mental health. That's what yo, she was also yo, saying. Mel, 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 look at me. 
Take your hater blockers off. Enough of that. <laughs> Do you that want? shit is fucking over, yo. Uh, in 2024, I'm kicking y'all in the fucking back. Enough of that. Enough. I'm only stating what you Man, said. Man, listen. As a nigga that suffered with it, I wasn't trying to show and tell every fucking body every second. I don't. Bro, there's a that could sound bad. No. I don't. It's, 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 no, it don't. No, it, don't, no, it, it don't. It can be disingenuous. I stand, I stand on yes. it. Yes. I stand on it, yo. If People I'm using doing... that as a marketing ploy. Yeah, as stop it. To actually... to get go, go get help. Understood. Exactly. Yeah. Let me call a, a phone number or some shit if you need some real assistance in this. Bad help luck is crazy. Let me go talk to a professional. The motherfuckers talking back to you in your comments and on your page are not professionals to oh, deal with your mental up, health. Ice. Instagram is not your That's fucking it. therapist. Shut up, Ice, you dickhead. It ain't. It ain't. But it triggers that release of dopamine and you think you feel better now. Now, if you actually heard the full rant, Joe actually clears it up. He said, yo, this rant wasn't at her personally. And he actually gave her credit saying, yo, she's... You know what's really crazy about that rant? Joe Budden's the first person to talk about his therapy and to use therapy as almost like a defense for him actually doing the self-work because people like myself, ex-fans, will call him out for his narcissism, for his, you know, bullshit, horrible behavior, for how bad of a friend he is, for his poor leadership qualities, right? For the, the, the dicey things he's done with girls in the past, abusive stuff and whatever it may be. And he'll always talk about, I'm in therapy, I'm in therapy, I'm in therapy. He'll use it as a, almost as a cloak, as a shield to defend himself from being, you know, grilled or being questioned on his actions or his attitude. So it's funny that he would then now kick somebody else's back in for sharing their experience. Like Ari Lennox didn't say anything bad. She spoke about her experience on tour with Rod Wave. Hey, I went on tour with this guy. It wasn't great. The fans weren't really nice to me. They stole my clothes. For fuck's sake, they stole her clothes. Can you imagine? They stole her fucking clothes. That will be enough for me to moan about for a year. Don't tell me to shut up. They stole my clothes, bruh. They stole my fucking clothes. I can complain and moan about it. It's not that big of a deal. And here he is getting upset that she's moaning. Can you understand? Like, Joe Biden sometimes is really, un it's, really imp it's really interesting to think about how Joe Biden has friends. Forget him as an entertainer. He's interesting. I get, I like, again, I used to like the podcast. I stopped listening to it after they broke up because unfortunately I was too invested. Um, I kind of felt they were like, you know, a black version of Entourage. I believe they were all friends and trying to look out for each other and trying to all make it together. And of course, you know, they it kind of all fell apart and you get to see that it wasn't really as solid as I thought it was. And I kind of never really got over it type of thing, right? Parasocial, a little bit too invested. I get it, whatever. I don't give a fuck. But I've always wondered like, how does he have friends in real life? He seems like such a piece of shit. He has such like, for lack of a better word, bitch made tendencies. He does all that kind of gaslighting shit. He loves to be semantics, man. Like I could never speak to another man like this, like another d dude who likes to play like mental games. Because again, maybe it's because he's spent his whole career dating, you know, really young girls, especially Hispanic girls. He loves to like do these little games that he does on girls on boys and shit. Like I could never speak to a dude like that. Like, who, who are you? You just get punched in the face. You just get headbutted. Like, I'm not about to play these games with you. Maybe with a lady, right? Because I, I like boobies. That will be good. I might put up with it. But with a dude with a beard and who wears horrible outfits. Nah, I'm not putting up with your shit, bro. Your pussy ain't that good. Talented. You just got to figure out what works for you. And I want Ari to find a tour that works for her. I do. That whole rant was not directed at her. No. You know, the blogs will chop it up and make sense. Of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, enough of all this. I'm a victim. My mental health. How can you, hold on. How can you kick somebody's back in? for like however long they did it and then say hey i know the blood's gonna cut up and make it seem like i'm talking about but i'm not yes you were talking about her how can you say all of that shit and then i act like i wasn't talking about her i hate when people do that oh yeah you're missing the context no we're not missing the context we're reading or we're listening to what you said that's all the context there i wasn't talking about her yes she was 
the fuck up and do something about it. So today on IG Live, Ari's fans made sure to let her know that Joe was talking bad about her. Now, Ari and Rory do have a relationship. I'm sure Joe probably knows that before he criticized her. I don't know to what extent it had any effect in what he said about her. But here's Ari crashing out on Joe Budden and also bigging up Rory saying, yo, Rory is a dope guy. He appreciates black women. I don't know why Joe is constantly shitting on black women. And she also threatened to sue Joe as well. Here's what Ari said. Y'all let him know that. Tell him to stop touching them dogs. Because I don't understand why he's so obsessed. Like, why are you so obsessed? And why would you touching them dogs? Like, you're weird. He's weird and he's gross. He has smoke mouth. He's <laughs> disgusting. And he's a failure. Like, I love girl insults to boys because I think girls have a really amazing way to always dissect men way better than men do. I think there's a quote or there's a verse somewhere in the Bible that goes something along the lines of like, God gave men the power of the, you know, the strength of the hand or something like that. But God gave women the power of the tongue, which can be interpreted loads of ways. But it's mostly like, hey, they can say some scathing stuff about you that can really tear you apart. And that was one of them. Smoke mouth. <laughs> A girl saying you have smoke mouth, a girl talking about your hairline or your lack of hair, a girl criticizing your trainers, like a, a girl could say something to you about your shoulders or how your hands are and you could not unnotice it forever. It could be one of those things that becomes an insecurity. She could be like, oh my God, why is your eye like that? And you could never not unsee your eye, how it is or something or your ears or your teeth or something like those little weird throwaway things can really cut you so i love the fact that she said he's got smoke mouth <laughs> drake said like leave the dogs alone joe oh, i love it leave the dogs alone. i don't know why he's obsessed like everything i do there's a million people to talk about in life like i can never just drake said like leave the dogs alone joe I don't know why he's obsessed like everything life. like i can never i think chin might be redacted bubba who said this? Big up, uh, who's this? Oh, that played myself. Well, I don't know what happened there. Big up, KP. Big up, NJ Ranger. Kanye, Elon, Joey writing sympathy for diagnoses, then proceed to do anything other than do the real work necessary in therapy. Rules for me. Exactly. Ig fucking exactly. Ig fucking exactly. And it's so annoying. Because it's so, it happens so often. It's so transparent. And like you said, rules for me, not for D. It's fucking, or rules for D, not for me. It's fucking annoying. I fucking hate it so much. So much. But this is just more bitch made because it's it's a girl. Like, he just, you know, without any, without any, like, provocation, he just get himself involved. Like, what does this have to do with him? If she mentioned, oh, yeah, the tour was shit. I felt like I was playing at a fucking Joe Budden concert or something. Fair enough. I understand if he gets involved. But she didn't mention him. Rod Wave has nothing to do with Joe. Like, why is he getting involved? Why was he so triggered by what she said? You know, it's such a bizarre fucking thing to get angry about. But maybe it kind of answers to the fact that he has some underlying, you know, um, anger issues. Because he's got he got really wound up and angry about her bad experience at a Rod Wave tour. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> i was the one there <laughs> why are you annoyed that i was annoyed like huh but big up kp and nj ranger appreciate you both or just express what's going on with me without him coming from behind pause i don't know the the trash the trash the landfill that he lives in Oof. to say something he always has to say something exactly and I don't know why. I do not know why. He's disgusting and I know his breath stinks. I know <laughs> in my heart his breath stinks. So I don't know what it is or what it will She said that so sincere. I know in my heart of heart his breath stinks. I just know it. I can feel it. <laughs> That's like Burt Kreischer. I believe Burt Kreischer must smell like shit. I don't believe a guy who showers in his swimming pool. Cause I remember he said that. He said he showers in his swimming pool. A man who showers in his swimming pool must smell like shit. A man who drinks as much as Bert does 
who eats as much as Bert. There's no way Bert Kreischer smells good. There's no way Bert Kreischer smells like, oh my God, oh my God, guys, did I tell you this? I was about to say, Savage, you know how, s <sighs> I told you I live in a trap, right? I told you I live in a hood. I live in a really rough part of town. I'm from here, kind of, you know, my parents live like half an hour away. I grew up in the bad, the bad side of town, right? I'm a thug, right? Cool, whatever. I walked past one of our, we've got like, um, we've got a shop called a cash converters here in the UK. It's basically similar to you guys having a pawn shop, right? Where you go and, you know, you pawn stuff in. Like if you've got an old stereo, if you've got a new phone, whatever, to get money. But obviously in the hood, in really bad neighborhoods, those pawn shops or those cash converters are basically a version of a bank. If you can't get a loan, it's a way to get a loan. Obviously you won't get the value of your thing and they'll, you know, they'll undercut you or something because they need to sell it on. But if you need money, you can maybe exchange like an iPhone for, you know, a quarter of what it's valued to get some cash. And then maybe later on, you can come back and buy it back, right? I was, but I usually go there to, to buy like headphones. Like I bought these headphones from there, right? Or like cameras, like little things because people always like pawn stuff in because, you know, whatever. So I'm always looking for like speakers, headphones, cameras, whatever I can look at. You know what really broke my heart today? I walked past the window display and guess what they had on the display? Guess what they had, bro? Guess what they had in the window display? Bitch, you guessed it. Dior Sauvage. You know the, the, after, the fucking aftershave? The fucking fragrance, the men fragrance. Dior Sauvage, the one with Johnny Depp and the advert. They had that on the shelf, bro. Somebody pawned Dior perfume. That is some deep, sh that is some poor shit. That's when I knew I lived in a poor neighborhood. Somebody pawned Tom Ford fragrance. That whatever that Tom Ford one, all the boys like, I think it's called like, is it called like Cedarwood? Or something, or some, I forgot what the name of it is called. I saw a Dior Sauvage and I saw the Tom Ford one. Fuck, bro. Imagine you're so damn bad that you're pawning perfume. <sighs> this is why I'm so humble. This is why I'm so grounded because I live in an area like this. <laughs> I see this shit every day on my way to work. <laughs> on my way to work, I'm walking past a shop where somebody pawned perfume take to like maybe i have to sue him is that what i have to do like get on my cardi b shit and like really just spin the bread to shut his smoke mouth up because he's <laughs> disgusting and he's a lame he's to like sit this. here this man has never ever in his life validated the truth he just loves to be he just loves to oppose everybody he just loves he loves to oppose everybody because he hater. who hurt him. I do not yeah, know what woman hater. hurt him. I don't know. Mm. Pure hater, that's why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he like he'll never he'll never acknowledge the truth. I can't ever just talk to my people without him just being psychotic. Mm hmm don't know what it is i should i should literally i should literally just drop 20 fucking k to sue him i really should just because <laughs> just because just because anyway you get the point right so what's my conclusion you know what I think is the case here? Apart from Joe Budden being an actual... You know people say they're haters online? Some people would even talk to, call me a hater, which is insane. I think I'm more of a cultural commentator. <laughs> but you know people always say that they're haters? I think Joe is actually a real hater. That's what a real hater actually looks like. Like a pure, unabridged, unapologetic hater is somebody that can just grab hate from, from the... You know, just from just from the atmosphere they just grab it they just latch onto stuff and just argh, they ch chow down and hate but at the point at the crux is at the point of this is this i think joe for his entire career before he was a podcaster when he was a rapper i think he was always known so i don't think he was always known as as an emotional guy as an emotional rapper 
he put all his emotions, all these personal experiences, all of his troubles with relationships, friendships, life in general, all into his music. He'd be very um, self-deprecating. Um, he'd do a lot of kind of personal inventory through his raps. That's what he was known for, right? Mood music, you know, that whole fucking series of mixtapes was basically a lot of that, a lot of introspection, a lot of brutal honesty, all that stuff in music. But it was never really acknowledged. No one really gave a shit. I'm somebody that thinks he was an amazing rapper when he was coming up, but no one cared. Apart from Pump It Up, no one really gave a fuck about his music career. So it must have been very damaging to his ego. Or it must have just hurt him a lot, feelings-wise, to know that he was one of the most talented artists, talented rappers, sorry, of his generation, but he could never translate it into being an artist. And nobody cared that he was emotional about it or he was pouring his emotion to his music. Then 10, 20 years down the line, Drake comes around or just the music changes, the you know, the landscape, an artist like Drake pops up and he is all emotion. He's all emotions, all feelings. And then behind him, loads of kids come up who are also all emotions, all feelings. Then the cultural conversation around mental health changes and people start talking about these things more openly and you get more sympathy for talking about these things. People are a little bit more understanding of it. So I think at the crux of it, Joe is just jealous that he's not living in this time where people are a little bit more understanding and would acknowledge people's like mental health struggles and the things that they go through that kind of maybe influence their art, their art, maybe distract them from making art. He can't, it, it kind of eats where it's his soul that people don't give a shit about his feelings the way they gave a shit, the way they give a shit about people's feelings nowadays. That's what I think is at the core of it because I still think, although his podcasting career is where it is and he's done amazingly well, there is probably at heart still a lot of like, wouldn't say regret, but a lot of contempt for the industry and maybe the fans that he was never able to make it. Really, he still kind of hates that fact. And then, of course, when he sees other people doing the Joe Budden thing of pouring out their hearts, of saying how they feel on camera, it just fucking eats away at him. That's why he's hating like this. That's the only thing I can think of to explain it. Because why else would you just jump out the window to attack Ari Lennox about her own experience opening up for Rod Wave. Like, can't I not complain? It's fucking social media. If I want to vent and moan, let me complain. It's not that deep. But anyway, here it goes. Or maybe it's not all that deep. And maybe the reason why he did it is because he wants to do the content or everything. He knows about putting himself in the algorithm. He knows about the, the you know, I'm reacting to it. Other people react to it that whole kind of economy and he just did it just to kind of get a reaction who knows either way i thought that was fucking hilarious big up ari lennox um i'll defend her to the hill i'm a big fan of her music big fan of hers as well um you know chalk up the the fucking roadway thing as an l but it happens it is what it is that's just a fourth come back again but joe budden is a consummate hater one of the best haters in the world he's up there he's, he's definitely one of the top 10 haters of all time he definitely will go in the hall of fame of hating because that was so random that came out of the blue and was so unnecessary. But again, it's proof. That guy's a hater. You cannot touch him when it comes to hating. He's in a league of his own.